rebellion. We see that David begins to call out, uh, Lord, have mercy upon me. This is an utterance call of a broken heart, a crushed heart. In the consensus of David's sin, David began to declare and know that he's a man of God and he's got to come right with God in order to receive the righteous things that God has in store for him. Most of us know the story about the, uh, what happened with Bathsheba and knowing that David uh, did some negative things to his, uh, her husband Uriah. But the prophet Nathaniel came, Nathan came to David in the midst of his uh, chambers and began to tell him about the very story, how the Lord is going to really deal with him because of some of the sins he had committed uh, uh, in this particular event. But we want you to know and understand also uh, that now that uh, this event has taken place and David knowing in his heart that it has taken place. He's asking God for forgiveness and such a harsh thing that it, uh, it, it is that sometimes when we as men and women got to get in a position, we forget to fall to our knees and ask God for forgiveness. And we really think that we can catch, just forget about the sin. You know, sometimes when you do something negative, it's not in the will of God. You got to be able to take it before God and ask him for forgiveness. You just can't go, well, maybe he won't worry about it. No, he knows. He knows. He knows what's going on. He knows the things that take place in your life. And so what we got to do is be a man and woman of God is begin to trust in the Lord and lean not to our own, but acknowledge God in all his ways. And that's a direction he would give us. And it says over here in Psalms 51, as we read in the first uh, verse of uh, first two verses of Psalm 51. And I want to give some clarity of information during that course of time. What happened in that event that we know that David is calling out to the Lord in the midst of his heinous situations in the, in the midst of this heinous crime that he committed before God being a leader of the house of God. And David began to cry out, texting the Lord, that, look, Lord, forgive me. I know I'm wrong in what I'm doing. I'm asking you to look, look, blot out my transgressions and my sin. Take away those things that I was done with so shamely before you. Matter of fact, when we look at how David really uh, poured his heart out to God in a process of uh, a crushed and a broken heart of a consensus of his own sins. You know, looking at the process of psalmist, you know, he had been made uh, with a heart of guilt. You know, he, he was another, he was convicted for the things he knew that wasn't right. Temptation is a bad thing. I'm telling you, it can get a hold of you. And when it get a hold of you, it can cause you to fall in every direction. And we got to believe and declare and decree that in the midst of where we are, God is more able to bring us out of whatever it is that we're in. The word of God declares and pleads that uh, and David begins to speak out about his heinous crimes. He asked the Lord to forgive him for the very things that he had been through and some of the events that's going on in his life, that he may be uh, transformed, that he may be forgiven for those events that he have done, that he may be, that that sin be blotted out from him, that it be taken away from him. And then David began to ask the Lord, Lord, what is it that I need to do? And this is what we got to do sometimes. We got to ask the Lord, Lord, what is it that I need to do? What are some of the things I must do to make myself satisfied toward you? I mean, the Bible says when a man weighs, pleases God, they say God will give him the desires of his heart. So we got to understand and realize, excuse me, we got to understand and realize that in the midst of our dilemma, in the midst of our crisis and we know that we're wrong in a certain event, what should we do? What should we say to Christ? And when we're going through these particular events in our life, how should we orchestrate and design ourselves to be what Christ wants us to be? You know, the Bible says no good thing. We hold from those who walk upright. We'll be a upright walking man and women of God. God will continue to show his favor toward us. Even in the midst of our dilemma, God continue to show us all that he need to uh, have us to do is being men and women of God. And I want to make sure I'm getting some of the information here because in the midst of sometimes these things get a little distracted and the process has been distracted. We find ourselves just off course a little bit. So I'm getting some readings across my monitor. But I want to just pay attention to the word of God and what God is really speaking here to us on this particular morning concerning this uh, forgiveness of our sins. It goes over in the, the New English translation. We're going to be dealing with the translation of the New English translation. We're going to be dealing with the amplified version, a little bit of CBN. We're going to be dealing with several different things of the Word of God. And we want you to see just what the Word of God is really speaking here concerning this particular event that's going on in the life of, of David. You know, we look at the New International Version. Um, no, well, let's look at the New English Translation. He said, have mercy on me, O God, because of our loyal love. You know, it talks about the loyal to God. This is the same thing of honor. We want to have the loyal to God in the midst of where we are. He's yet looking over us to keep us whatever it is that maybe we're going through. So when we trust in God and we need not to our own understand we're not as God in all our ways. Then God begins to give us a directional path. And that directional path, God begins to show us everything he needs us to do in terms of his word and toward his kingdom, toward his power, toward his grace, toward his mercy. He will continue to show us. Now, now, 
And those of you, uh, I just want to take a break here, and I want to say something to those of you who are coming in through the, the line. We're having some difficulties on this particular line in terms of uh, those who are coming in through what we call our uh, uh, Internet service and our actually our sale line because there are some who don't have Internet service and want to make sure that you can be able to hear the service and want to make sure we're getting that out to you. So as I said once again, for those who are calling in, you might get some um, some area of this uh, of this uh, particular uh uh, event that's going on here, which is our Axie Sound Report, it's kind of giving us a little negative, but I want to stay on track with this word because I know that ain't nothing but the enemy trying to throw me off course, but I know the plan of God is already in place for us to do what God called us to do, so what we want to do is continue to move forward, and we want you guys to be with us and hear what the word of God has to say this morning, let's uh, continue to move forward, and let's hear what the word of God has to say, we got a few people that's on the line but we know there is some kind of difficult going on here, but we're not going to worry about that. So um, he says over here in the book of uh, of the international version, as I said, in the new translational version, uh, or the new English translational version, he said, have mercy on me, O God, because of my loyal love, because of my great compassion, wipe away my rebellious acts and wash away my wrongdoing. It's a, it's a comprehensive word to get us to see and understand that God's got a plan for our life and it supersedes far beyond more than we can imagine or think of. Now, David, being a man of God who's called into the work of the kingdom of God, he acknowledged the things that he have in his life is not right. And this is what we have to do as men and women of God. Once we confess according to Romans 10, 8, 9, we got to believe and declare and decree that God's got a plan that's totally supersedes far beyond more we can imagine even understand. David begins to speak another word over here in the verse 4 of Psalm 51. He said, again, he said, against thee. And he talks about it personally. It's a personal thing to him. He said, against thee only have I committed this sin. And David said, I'm the, I, I, I committed this sin unto you. And if I committed the sin unto you, my, I, he said, if I committed the sin only, have I sinned? And done this evil in thy eyesight. Now, this is this is interesting when we talk about this, because when we talk about the word of God, say first let a man examine himself. I believe that's over in First Corinthians, the one in eleven and twenty-eight. Talks about first, I believe it's twenty-three. If we want to look at that properly, and yeah, Ellis, he's not always correct on everything, but you know I try to study to show myself approval. But I want to flip over to there, and I want to make sure even when I be glitching something, I want to make sure I'm right. So I'm gonna flip over the book of Corinthians, and I believe First Corinthians. Over in the 11th chapter, I believe it's the 23rd verse, and the word of God decrees and declares, and I believe it says right here, as we click at that, uh, uh, 1 Corinthians, let's turn to 1 Corinthians here before we go forth, because I want to make sure the corrections are right, because I don't want to be a person who's giving you wrong information about what I'm speaking. I like to be pretty accurate in what I'm doing, because, you know, sometimes you got soothsayers out there to try to uh, say things that make you feel opposite what you say, but, you know, the Bible said no weapon formed against you. You know, if, uh, the, Bible, the word of God declares, and I think it's a 28th verse, he said, and yeah, that's First Corinthians 11, 20. If it's let, first let a man examine himself. David is dealing with a self-examination to the point that he realized and understand it in the fourth verse. He said, against thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. Well, what is he talking about? He's talking about the process of what happened with Bathsheba. He knew that the prophet Nathan came before him and exposed him, and now he's got to be able to come forth and ask God to forgive him for this heinous thing that he's performed. And the same thing goes in our life. It's not what somebody else has done. It's what you've done. You need to sweep around your own back door. You need to find out what your problem is with you. You know, don't point at anybody else because you got too many things going on in your own life to try to worry about what's going on in somebody else's life. We as being man and woman of God got too much that we got to ante and own up to as being man and woman of God to worry about what somebody else has done and not worried about what we have done. And uh, we want you to guys to know that, you know, when David speaks this word, he speaks it with the understanding to realize that God's got a plan for his life. And if he don't get his sins right, then he'll find himself caught up in a dilemma. And that dilemma can cause him to fall opposite of what God declared him to be. And sometimes in our life, we find ourselves caught up in situations and what really holds us back is the plan of God. I mean, the, what holds back the plan of God is us. It's, it's not the Lord. It's us. And so we want to realize and understand that God has got a plan for us and that plan he has, but it supersedes further beyond more than we can imagine, even understand. And this is what God is really trying to get us to understand. First, we've got to worry about our own transgressions, our own sins. And we got to understand and realize that God got so much in store for us that even as he got much in store for us, that we got to be able to believe that he's going to take us away from whatever it is that's calling us to be alienated. You know, it's, it's the Lord who delivers us from all our iniquity. It's the Lord who delivers us from our sins. It's the Lord who brings us out of our proclivities. David begins to look at the situation over in the fifth verse. He said, he said, behold, I was shaped in iniquity. 
Now, his sins cause him to be shaped in iniquity. That when you go out and commit a situation in your life that's not pleasing to God, it shapes you. You know, the, the conviction is what shapes you. You know, you're, you're worried about what somebody's thinking about you, what somebody saw you. So that's self-conviction. And some people don't have a conscience at all, a love for them. They think that I'm just right, all right. Well, you know, the word of God said, ain't now one of us right. We all have fallen shit according to Romans 3 and 23. Matter of fact, it goes into Romans 3 and uh, 8, 9, and 10, uh, well, well, 10 and 11 and 12. When you read them 10 to, to 12 verse, you know, from third chapter to 10 to uh, 12 verse, so I want to get that right, that, you know, he say, ain't now one of us right. You know, that's why the word of God declares any but one person that will walk this earth that was pure. And that was Jesus Christ himself. So we all fall short of something that's going on in our life. And just because we come to Christ, we're not free from sin, but we call more sinless. You know, we, we, we get more sin out of our life until we receive that body that Christ has designed for us to have. And then we know we're totally free from sin. That we would have left here and to be absent from the body to be present with Christ. Now it comes in the precision that we all got to deal with the double resurrection. We see that over in the first Corinthians in chapter 15. Now, he talks about those who are being resurrected, the caught over Christ during the course of time, that he come back to claim his own, and then the dead were raised first. We don't understand the right, we realize for those who are in the, uh, we've been Hebrews, those who died in the process of not uh, hoping for the Messiah, but had not had a chance to see him as went before us, would rise first, and then we will come after them. We will all be caught over Christ to see the very power, the presence of the Spirit, and what God designed and engineered us to be in the direction in which we're going in. I want you to really understand what I'm saying here. It's about how you be forgiven for your sins it's your transgression it's the things that you know you don't have time to look at anybody else you got to look at yourself you got to know that there's something in you that's not right and when you know what's in you is not right then god will understand and realize the more help you in the direction which you're going in so the bible says about that over here we look at uh the, the fourth verse and we'll look at it once again he said against thee only have i sinned and done this evil in thy sights now he's talking about himself David is not worried about pushing the finger at nobody else. He's been exposed by the prophet Nathan. And now he's got to be able to understand that he's been a man of God. And he's got to come to the position where God wants him to be. If he's going to be the leader. And even as you're in leadership, leaders always have good people around them to keep them praying. Because you never know when the devil is coming from. Because I tell you, I deal with some of these Jezebel and he had Ahab spirits all the time. And I, I just don't deal with them. I just cut them completely off. I don't deal with them. I don't talk with them. I don't want to even socialize with them because they have a rebellious spirit. And they always want to claim something that they don't really know what they talk about. They don't like your church. They don't like where you talk. They don't like where you look. They don't like where you dress. They always have something to say that's according to their self-righteousness. And so I just don't deal with them at all, period. You know, if anybody who comes a part of my ministry want to be a part, then that's good. If you don't, then you need to catch, you need to hitchhike. You know, go in the other direction. If that's what's going on in your church, and the point you need to go to, you need to go back to where you come from. But don't come over here causing division. And the word of God says over in Psalms um, 51 and the fifth, that behold, I was shaped in iniquity and in sins. I was shaped in iniquity in sins. Did my, did, did, did my mother conceive me? Now he's saying something there. You know, we were born in the sin, but we're not of sin. You know what I'm saying? We're in the sin thing. But as being man and woman of God, we've got to realize and understand being a part of the kingdom of God, there are some things that we have to deal with during the course of the time that we are being man and woman of God. You know, there's, there's, there's certain events that takes place in our life, that even in the events that take place in our life, we got some interference going on here. want to just kind of mute some things out here. This line so, is now okay. muted. Okay, this well, line is now on hold. Okay, this line is now unmuted. Okay, we want to take that out of here. This line is now off hold. Okay, we want to take that out of there. So we got some people that's coming in. We're going to kind of be um, shifting around here. But in the course of the time you're on the line, we ask you, please, please, we're asking you uh, that if you can really be in a place, because you're on a national network, I mean, we, we give you the opportunity to come online. But if you can please keep things in a position that we won't have so much um, background noise and because we don't have to want to pull you out of the system. So we want you to be there with us. But we want to make sure you're hearing everything that's going on in the work that we're doing this morning. Let me uh, try something here on the so I'm getting some sister ways. I'm getting some stuff back here. Uh, we want to make sure we get that together, and we want to put that in position. So, so as we go forth and hear what the Word of God has to say, we want to declare and decree that as we look at the Word over here in the book of, um, thank you, Lord, in the book of uh, uh, Psalm 51 and verse five. We want to break this information down. Pastor Ellis is always going to give you clarity and information. How the Word of God declares that, it, but, but, but behold, I was shaped in iniquity. Now, those who are coming in the line, I see quite a few people that's coming in. Got this, you're coming in. We're in Psalms 51, 
and we're dealing with the process of overcoming your sins. You know, we in, uh, this is our Psalms report, and I thank God for my uh,